Yarmo, you've been doing this a while here in Columbus. When you look at the excitement around the Blue Jackets this offseason, is this kind of everything you've hoped for leading up to this season? Yeah, but I want the excitement at the end of the year. So, um, yeah, it's it's um, it's been a uh, interesting summer and an exciting summer and and uh, too long of a summer. And now, now we're finally here and get started. So um, it was great to be in Traverse City and and see the uh, the young talent that we have coming and, and now they get a chance to compete against the big boys and and um, I think it'll be a real competitive camp and and I think that that's exciting for us too is is that it's going to be some tough decisions but that's a great problem to have next we'll go to Aaron Ports line yeah, how do you think expectations are different now for your club and how do you think your guys may be ready to handle people expecting more from them well, I think that um, the biggest thing for us is always the, the internal expectations that we have. And, and I think the biggest one is that we need to improve every day with our group. And, and, and that's, that's something that has to be sort of a, the, um, you know, painted into the, to every wall of the, uh, of the locker room and, and minds of every player that, that we come here every day and we mean business and we want to get better because our, our group's still very young. But so the, the uh, emphasis has to be in the process of getting better instead of um, you know, the, uh, listening too much of the external expectations. We expect to make the playoffs every year. That's, that's a goal that we always have here. And um, you know, we've seen many years that after you do that, then anything is possible. Stanley Cup's been won from 16th place, making the playoffs and, and so forth. But um, I think internally, the uh, it's it's um, you know we have a demanding coach. We have a good coaching staff. Um, the expectations for those players coming from the coaching staff and management is very clear. That we come here every day and we expect to get better. And if, if we can concentrate on that and, and uh, put all of our energy and focus in that, the results will come. And, and I know that, that people from outside are always looking at the, uh, the record and the, uh, the goals and so forth. But we have to uh, concentrate on the process. That's, it's really important in, in pro sports, whether it's individual or team sport, that you don't get your focus away thinking this, to how many points do I have now, how is it, what's our percentage, this and that. I think the focus needs to be always in the process of, of getting better. And, and, and with a young group like we have in, in particular, it's, it's really important. Go ahead, Porty. One of your objectives this summer was to get better defensively, bring the goals against down. It's not certainly just the defenseman, but how do you see the defense settling in for you, and how big are those question marks to you and the, the right side, specifically the top four? Well, I, I think that internally we'll get better just from, from our guys growing and, and getting better each day. Like I mentioned, I, I, I've seen Andrew Peak down there, and he looks bigger and stronger. He had, a, I thought, a very strong season last year. We expect him to be better. Um, Eric Goodbranson will bring that size that, that uh, we needed back in the back end. and, and uh, keeping our uh, net front an uncomfortable place to be and park. So um, I, I think coaches have been working on for a long time now on, on systems and how we can tweak that to, uh, to uh, be better defensively. So everybody's doing their part, understanding that um, you, know, you can't win games 5-4 or 6-5 in this league and expect to, um, to get good results. So. We have to be better as a team, as a five-man unit defensively, not just the defenseman. But I think that the internal growth of, of our D group is, uh, is, is the most important thing, not just adding one individual, whether it's Eric or, or even Johnny Goodrow on the, on the front. Yeah, on the forward side, I, I think we need to keep, keep improving as a group. And you know, we, we have some pretty good size back there now. If you want to concentrate on defense, we got Zach Wierenski and and uh, and um, Vladi Gavrikov and Eric Goodbranson. They're all 
big and strong defenseman, and then you can you can um, add in some some different uh, elements of of, uh, of a good defense, which puck moving is a huge part of it. If you spend don't spend a lot of time in your own zone, that's the best defense you can get. And and add Andrew Peak to that now at over 210 pounds, and and we got some pretty good size back there too. So. Um, yeah, I I know that the uh, the coaches have been watching video, meeting every day, leading into training camp. So I, I think there's going to be some pretty tweaks there too. Go to Dave Metzl. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, well, last year at Traverse, Cole Sillinger I think established himself. Did anybody this year make that kind of a move where they may have increased their stock over the last four or five days? Cole Sillinger was was really good last year. Him and Chinakov as as a uh, duo there, they they were excellent. But I think the real test always comes in training camp here when you play against the NHL players and start scrimmaging and you, you, it's not just the physical or, or the uh, the skill part either it's the uh, the mental readiness and strength that, that you play the right way even when the big names are playing against you or with you and sometimes you can see that in young players where they get a little overwhelmed playing with some of the star players and pass when they should carry the puck and and uh, you know try trying to please the, the veteran next to them and and if you want to make the team, you got to play the right way, and you've got to play with a lot of confidence, and and um, come with the mindset that you're going to make the team. And I think Cole, not only in Traverse City but throughout the uh, the training camp, showed that that he was here to make the team, and and he did, and he earned it. So um, we'll see with this year's group when we get to training camp. Next one, Mark Shag. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, Armo, you, you did bring in a couple of veteran PTOs this year. Um, just wondering, do you, do you feel like that your the young group needs more of a veteran presence? And then what kind of an opportunity do they have to help make an impact on your team? Yeah, I, it'll be interesting to see how they do. It's the uh, that's that's why they're on a tryout. And, um, you know, we, it's um, you know you have the veteran rule in the exhibition games that helps too, and and we can have the right number of games for all all of the veterans that we have uh, under contract that uh, you know don't necessarily want to play six or seven games, but um, you know all of them from James Neal and and Victor Rask and and Ben Harper they've played in the league they know what it takes and and um, you know they're they're here for the opportunity and. And we'll see um, once we get started with the uh, training camp and the exhibition games how they do. Any other questions for Yarmo? Jared? Yep, right. Yarmo, just about incorporating Johnny into this <coughs> franchise. Obviously, a lot of that work has already been done off ice the last couple of months, moving here, uh, getting to know teammates, et cetera. In terms of the on ice structure, how do you anticipate his skill set changes what you do? Um, every day, let alone in games. How, what What is unique about his talent that maybe changes the way you think through getting ready to play? Well, he's one of the elite players in the whole league, obviously, in you know, 115 points last year. He's a play driver off the wing. He's, he's, uh, he's I'd say he's pretty similar in his way that he plays that, to uh, Panarin, who we had here for a couple of years, that, you know, he's not he's not a center, but he sort of plays like a center when, when we have the puck comes off the wing and drives the play through the neutral zone and can create offense and 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 players around him read, read off of him and and he's got great one-on-one -on -one ability he's shifty he, he sees the ice he anticipates he's got all those ingredients and and qualities that the top offensive players have and um, I think the uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm in the locker room who, who gets to play with them you know every everybody wants to play with the, with the best players and um, you know it's it's his career has been great so far and we expect big things out of him and but as I said he's he's not one guy's not going to be a savior that that uh, you know everybody else is kind of looking at to do things it's going to have to be the five-man unit and learning to play and read off of each other and, and support each other and and we got to right, find the right combinations that, that um, you know, work well together, have that chemistry and, and the right ingredients where, where you have somebody to do a little bit of the dirty work and, and get to lose pucks and, and play physical. And then, then you have the finesse and, and skill and the hockey sense and, and all those things that I mentioned with, with Johnny Goodrow and guys that can think on the same uh, wavelength with them. And, and, uh, you know, they, I, I think the first few days in training camp and the exhibition games in particular will will tell us a lot who who will 
find that chemistry with him and and uh, and um, it's up to uh, uh, Lars to decide the line combinations and I'll, I'll chime in my my uh, thoughts and ideas and and uh, he'll he'll uh, you know, we work together well and, and but he he's the guy that decides who plays with who and how much. Anything else for Yarmo? Great, thank you, thank you, Yarmo. Thank you.